So I completely forgot to do an intro for this video, but here is a get ready with me while I talk about reproductive health. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. What's up? How's everyone doing? How's your day? I just wanted to film a quick get ready with me while I talk to you guys about reproductive health. So let's get started. Reproductive health is physical, mental, and social well-being in all matters regarding pregnancy, relating to pregnancy. Women's reproductive health also doesn't just include being pro-life or pro-choice. It also includes things like fertility, contraception, so on and so forth. For me, I am very pro-choice. I believe that if you don't have a uterus and you don't have to birth a child, then you don't have any say in if a woman does or doesn't want to keep a baby. It's just her choice. The problem here is that sexual and reproductive health should be a basic human right, but in the US right now, it's, you, you don't really know. You just, you don't really know whose right it is. Donald Trump's first acts as president imposed a sweeping policy restricting access to safe abortion services for women worldwide. You know, this issue has always been a very controversial, complicated issue, only because who has the right to say that this person gets to live, but then this person doesn't get to live? Reproductive health is a very touchy subject, only because I think that there's no right or wrong answer, so this makes it very open for people to express their opinions, which, you know, both are very valid. I 100% believe that it should be the woman's choice to do what they want with their body. It should not be the choice of the government, the people around them, no one. It should be the woman's choice to decide on if she wants to keep a baby or if she wants, you know, to possibly get an abortion because either she's not ready to have kids, she's not, you know, apt to give the kids a good life, or in worst case scenario, there was a rape case that could have happened. What's helping to solve this problem is the Center for Reproductive Rights are fighting for abortion rights to return back to the Supreme Court to try to overturn the abortion law. As well as the Global Fund for Women, with help from their partners, are determined to change the status quo for sexual and reproductive health and rights that often face backlash and setbacks. I think it's really complicated because nobody really knows your health better than you do or somebody, you know, with a PhD who does ethics and health for a living. After speaking to someone who works as an RN nurse, she has told me a lot about the different policies and programs that they have going on at the hospital that make it so that women have the right to get reproductive health if needed. Being in the nursing industry, we have a lot of good resources for women's care. Centerpoint offers comprehensive services for infertility, gynecology, and even prenatal education classes. It is important to keep up with these good programs because it helps educate women and shows them that there are a lot of resources for them if they need the help. Whether you're embracing motherhood, seeking treatment for illness, or maintaining wellness, Centerpoint Medical Center is committed to keeping women healthy. The Women's Center at Centerpoint Medical Center offers comprehensive services and care that will enhance your birthing experience from conception, throughout your pregnancy, and care of your newborn. So I interviewed a person who has different views than me. They are pro-life and they told me the story of why they are pro-life. And I'm just gonna give a warning now because the story that I'm gonna tell next involves rape victims. And I know that it's a very touchy subject for some people. So if this is too touchy for you, click away. I spoke with somebody who was conceived by rape. Um, they told me that all growing up, that they were very poor and that um, they didn't get out of 
poverty and into the lower middle class until about their late 30s. Until they're about 28, they said that Jesus has saved them and that Jesus healed them in many ways. That they've gotten over the fact that they were conceived by rape and that they were happy to be alive. They say that murdering a baby in cold blood is a permanent thing. They said that one can get over the trauma if they seek healing, um, but one doesn't get over the fact that they're murdered. I think that not everyone can be as strong-minded as they are. They said that one can get over trauma if they seek healing, and I personally believe that that's just... It's different for everybody. Everyone is different and everyone deals with trauma in a different way. I hope that we go from a country that shuns the idea of abortion and educate more people on the benefits of different contraceptives and reproductive health for women. So bringing it back to what I was talking about in the beginning where women's reproductive health just doesn't involve being pro-life or pro-choice. It also involves fertility, contraception, and so forth. About one in four girls in the U.S. have an STI right now, and to prevent this, you always want to use protection, use condoms, even with oral sex, and regularly get tested at least once a year. Also, talk to your partner and ask them when was the last time that they got tested, and encourage them to do so if they haven't gotten tested in the last year. There are many ethical aspects which derive from the application of free production control in women's health. Some ethical aspects views on the link between sexuality and reproduction and ethics of birth control. Another ethical aspect is abortion. Abortion is a touchy ethical aspect because you are terminating a human pregnancy. There are two different types of abortions that can be done. In-clinic abortions, which a doctor uses medical instruments to remove the pregnancy from the uterus, and the medication abortion, which you will take pills that end your pregnancy and make your uterus expel the tissue. Abortion is one of the safest medical procedures out there. One in four women in the U.S. will have an abortion by the time they're 45 years old. Access to safe abortion is critical for a woman's health. Sexual and reproductive rights are human rights. Rights to make decisions concerning sex and reproduction free of discrimination, coercion, and violence. I think that being able to have a safe abortion is better than having a very janky black market abortion, which could lead to a lot of infection and possibly death. Another ethical issue that I think that comes with women's reproductive health is in the case that what if a woman does get raped and does get pregnant from their rapist? I think that a lot of women now are being shamed because on the media and you know online everyone says that oh she deserved it because of what she was wearing or oh she deserved it because she was drinking too much and I do think that it should be a woman's full right to say that she doesn't want the baby anymore and that if given the choice to have a safe abortion I think that a lot of women would take that option. An ethical framework that women's reproductive rights uses is the ethical framework of rights and duties. Rights and duties really means that if somebody has a right, another person has a duty, basically the duty to respect their certain right. According to this framework, an action is wrong if it deprives people of their rights and an ethical right action is one that involves upholding other people's rights. This plays in a lot with abortion because if somebody has the right to do what they want with their body, it is everyone else's duty to be able to respect that person's choice. I saw this idea floating around on the internet for a while that what if men got vasectomies until they're ready to have children? And I think this topic is an interesting topic to talk about because Vasectomies can be reversed, but with vasectomies being reversed, it's more complicated than the vasectomy it's itself. Another problem for me is that if the vasectomy is reversible, but it's just a little bit more complicated than the vasectomy, but a woman has to go through nine months of carrying a child and then also possibly hours of going through labor, why is there 
you know, a difference in that. Like, if your surgery is a little bit more complicated, why is it different from a woman giving birth and having to go through nine months of having a child? Here's the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks. Bye.